Do you want to know what I realized? Yeah, well, what did you realize? Fun. Welcome back to an acting analysis and tips training meters. And this is a series where I take a look at TV shows or movies and I look at acting choices, posture, body language, other type of stuff that shows up in those movies or TV shows. And it's kind of like a dissection of what you could use from that footage for your animation. So if you have a new idea, how could you combine that as an inspiration and kind of take your shots to the next level, so to speak. And today we're gonna to take a look at Only Murders in the Building. This is season two. And first clip is gonna be all about body posture, body language, and just the posing of the characters. And in this clip, we wanna look at the interrogation between these two interrogating her and kind of the body language and posture. You can see how she's leaning forward. She got the elbow on here. He has the elbow on it. They're all leaning forward. They're all leaning forward towards her in terms of interrogating, intimidating, kind of the interest is here. So they are all leaning forward versus her. If we scroll forward, she's fairly straight, but she's closed off. So think about the postures and the, the kind of the body language and what you do with the arm posing, right? It would be different if she would be leaning back, but more about that later. So look at the contrast between these two. And the cool thing is that she, at this point, tells the other guy something that gives her the upper hand. And you can see how he doesn't really want to know. You can see how he changes his pose from arm here, the elbow, going back like, oh, I'm not interested, right? He creates a space between these two like, no, I don't want to know. But then, okay, tell me more. <laughs> and I love that change. He goes, okay, he's got that little switch there in the elbow and the upper body here and how that head goes up. Okay, okay, humor me, tell me more. And then he goes back forward again, leaning forward towards the point of interest. And I love that little head wiggle at the end there. Come on, all right, go ahead, tell me. So great. And she doesn't move. Because again, she knows she has the upper hand. It's a very powerful posture with that triangle pose here. It's really great. Compared to what's going on, by the way, here, she has the upper hand and they realize what's going on. You can see that look in her. So even this, right? Imagine you have a character. What does that mean when someone is sitting and their pose is, you can't see it here, but you know, maybe also closed off, arms crossed, leaning forward, compared to leaning back, arms out, something like, oh, okay, I'm either relaxed or this is over. I don't know what to do. That little sinking in here into the chair. So really think about, even if you have an acting shot or a pantomime shot, when a character sits, like how do they sit? What's their posture? What are the arm poses? Is their head tilt or not for interest or not? Then you have him. He is definitely a bit more tense in here, tries to explain things, but you can see how it's all bunched up. He's definitely tense and nervous, but he's still leaning forward, trying to make a point. Like, I didn't do this, blah, 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 whatever he says here. And then you have the contrast between these two, right? So he's very much boxed in. because he, he doesn't want to do anything wrong. He stays within that box versus this guy's interrogating, and he can go all over the place, right? So he can open up the scene, open up the shot with those wild gestures. Now you can see this again, the lean forward is what he wants to know. And you got that little puppy tilt, right? So whenever you're interested, it'd be different if the head was like this compared to this. In a shot, you can go from this and then lean the head over. And you can see that kind of what I call the puppy tilt, kind of the, the tilt of interest. Same thing with her. She's curious what he's, he's going to say. And she even has the whole body leaning over and he stays within, I can see this here. Again, the pointing, it's very aggressive in terms of invading the space here. Probably in animation, I would probably use the other hand so you have a nice silhouette here or cross over to have that break frame. This is a horrible drawing, but that finger here wouldn't be in front of the face. I would bring it out into a cleaner silhouette. But you can see, <laughs> love this again. He has great little accents of, huh? Come on, come on, tell me what's going on. And again, he stays all within that box, doesn't really want to move. He does have cool head accents though, again, this this enough gesturing with the head to make the energy work of what he's saying. So it's not just the still, you know, not moving. He's not completely frightened and locked in. <laughs> they have so many great, great expressions in the show. And then you can see him, the contrast, because he thinks he has something to say and he is, you know, above the other people. Don't want to say too much, but you can see that lean back, how that posture is totally different. Arms are not on the table, he's very relaxed. Then Love that here, that little, almost not off screen, but kind of hidden pointing here. And then he leans forward really far. He's like, I'm not afraid. Imagine you have a table, one guy here and the other guy really leans forward, arm forward. You know, like I'm, I'm not afraid of breaking into your personal space because I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm saying to a point where he gets up. Now he completely breaks the kind of the, the somewhat established rule of you're being interrogated. You sit down and you stay there. No, he's getting up 
and then uses the space. <laughs> Love them. They're so great. And then you got that at the end. I don't, know, don't want to go too far into this, but it's such a great sequence. But again, really think about, I'm going to stop it right there. When you do have someone sitting here, right? That's a, like a ginormous hair, whatever he's sitting here. Imagine, is he leaning back? Is he leaning forward? Is he very stiff like the other character where he doesn't want to say too much? And what are the other characters doing? Imagine there's that line in between. Are they crossing that line? Do they want to stay, you know, if that's the height, do they want to prop themselves up and be taller to be able to look down? So really think in terms of the spatial relationship and the distance between all those characters and all the different posing. Like, what does all that mean for them? She is, you know, more open, but kind of turned away. She's done with his interrogation. He is still looking while he's moving away, completely flabbergasted of like, what, what is he doing? And so on. So to me, this is a longer sequence and I highly recommend that you watch all of this. This one is more about set usage and kind of the set influence. But at this point, there's a bit of a, a tense relationship between all three and you can see they're all separate, right? You still have negative space between all of these. There is no touching, there is no leaning, there's no hugging or nothing. So when you have, you know, let's say two or three people, think about that again, the space between them. What does that mean? What, what are their, the postures? Like how comfortable are they? Crossed with the hands, he does it later too. There you go. He got crossed. You can see that there's nothing really comfortable with this. There, he has a slight lean because he's a bit more towards him, but there's a big divide. You can see this in the colors as well with this sweater and the way they are dressed, but they're a bit more together, but closed off. So really think about that versus, you can see this at the end here, but as I'm going forward, he is getting out of the elevator, which I also love as a setup, right? You can see how the light changes on him. And he reacts to the opening of the doors and then goes out. I think that as a setup could be really cool for your shot where you place them anywhere. This could be on stage and imagine the curtain, like in front of them there's a curtain and opens up and maybe in the background you can hear the applause of all the people. And okay, if they're getting ready to go on stage for a speech, for a concert, whatever, and then maybe they have to pretend to be all happy, like a happy trio. But behind the scenes, it's all tense. You can see that, the seriousness, the clenching here. So that could be potentially a cool setup. But I love this here, goes out, and it's a serious moment where he wants to talk about something and just as he starts, <laughs> you have that happening. And I love that because that could be, he could say something, but he doesn't want to you know, intrude and bring out the hand here. So maybe the doors close before he can say his piece, or it's a moment where it's a serious moment and that adds some comedy in terms of him struggling with this and whatever you want to do, but I like that that the door here kind of breaks up that moment of, okay, I want to tell you guys something, and then this happens. And then as you come back, you can see this, he just had that idea and goes, okay, guys, guys, guys. And you can see the difference again. Arms are out now, it's open, fingers are open. He's much more open to, let's do this. He's still kind of like, I know what you're doing, and she is leaning away from him. You can really see the relationship there. And then as they are a bit more on the same page, as they usually are, you can see, his arms are opening up, it's kind of cut out before, but it's like, oh yeah, 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 eye contact. She turned away from them. And then what happens too is that it cuts. Now they are alone in frame because they are together. They're on the same page. They want to do something together. Cut to her now being alone in frame where she is not with them. So first we start with three people and then we have two and one. So that cuts and that change of composition also changes like the whole feeling of the shot and how they are together and she's alone in all of this. This scene is awesome. I love him. Watch what he does. They're trying to, they're trying to see what's going on. They're not supposed to be in here. And you can see that like, they're not taking, they have like legs together with a slight lean. They want to peek in, but not too much. Same with her. Like they're not supposed to be here. So the body just has a slight lean forward. And then they hear a sound and then you see the, whoa, and he goes straight towards her for protection. You think, oh, that's sweet. But then he goes behind her and say, okay, like I'm gonna use you as a shield. And not only that, and I'm gonna zoom in here. Look at what he is doing. He pushes her forward. Such a turn, I love this. First he goes up behind her going, okay, you can protect me, then you go first. And it's not just by telling her, it's just a, it's a full on push, go, go first. And even then he's like punching over, I don't wanna know, I don't know what's gonna be in here. He's, he's you know, again, you could do a walk where he's walking straight, totally different feel, Versus this, we have kind of very, very careful steps with a heel and this is really high. It's, it's different than a casual walk or maybe the, the foot goes maybe this high, he's straight up. So again, just in this, the relationship between these two, what does he do to her? And you can see that quickly, really, did you just do that? 
and then the way he continues, the contrast and the height. So again, if you have two characters, think about all of that. Are they supposed to be the same height or not? He could be, but maybe should he hunch over and why? So is he, is he concerned? Is he nervous? And so on. And there's a great moment too, but this again scares him. As he goes back, he has the moment of, oh, hold me. Okay, okay, but we can continue. And I mean, they are somewhat friends throughout the show. So this is also something that if they would be strangers, this could be weird. But they still know each other well enough that there's a familiarity between the two. So think about that too. So if, if the character leans onto someone or holds this or whatever it is, like a slight hug, whatever it is, if there's a distance or this, that's going to change how we perceive those two characters. So again, if you have two characters, think about how they are in relationship to each other, right? Or is there a distance or not? What's their posing? Are the gestures, any familiarity in terms of behavior and looks and all that good stuff. Last one is this and it's pretty short, but he wants to grab the knife. He says, no, 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 watch out for the prince. And he uses this. And then as he grabs it, he's really not careful. He goes, whoa, <laughs> and I love this. He's like, okay. Okay, there's no need to do this. And that is just as a general idea. And I think it had something similar in a, in a previous TV show or movie, but I love the idea that there's a character holding a prop and the character is fully not aware how this prop is gonna affect the other people around them, like here. So my idea that I thought, and you know, maybe one day I'll animate this, but what if this guy could be a priest and this is a crucifix or whatever it is, and he is friends with vampires for some reason. But obviously the vampires don't like it when this is around. So as he turns around and has maybe a casual discussion about a recipe or something, what it is, every time he turns around with the prop, there's a reaction by the other people. So you could have something where this could be the shot like this. And every time he walks around, turns around, they take a step away, they kind of put their arms up, or there's just, there's a, like the, the audio is not really the focus, right? If you do a lip sync, that's kind of a casual line, whatever it is, could be delivered like this, but the prop and what he does with it and how the prop affects the other people around them, that could be a cool setup for a shot, which I think I might do just for my reel in the future. So as always, these examples are just there as a springboard to, for you to take an idea and then tweak it and then adapt that for your shot. But I think anytime you watch anything, this could be a show that you think is silly or stupid or a bad movie, whatever it is, or a great movie. There's always something in terms of the composition. How are the characters placed? How does it cut like a show before from three characters to suddenly two in one? How do they use props? There's always something you can learn and I highly recommend that as you as a student, as an animation student, look at TV shows, look at, I don't know, game cinematics, whatever you have, or a play or observe people, there's always something you can find in terms of an idea that you could adapt and change for your shot to make your shot more original, and just more unique in terms of the acting choices. Speaking of unique, if you want me to help you to make your shots more unique, I do have workshops and you can sign up at any time, link in the description with all information. You can sign up whenever you want, you can start, it's very individual, tailored towards you. But if you want me to help you with your shots or your demo reel, let me know, you can sign up at any time. And speaking of time, thanks for watching till the very end. I appreciate it. And if you like this, usual like and subscribe for the algorithm, all that good stuff. But it's totally up to you, and I hope I'll see you in my next upload.